Let's go to John 1. This is going to bless you guys. I'm so excited. Okay, so we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. We have one reference point, and that's that born-again experience when we became a new creation. The, the other point that we can mention is our baptism. When we were baptized, we said what we now believe about who we are. We said that we died with Christ. We said that now it's no longer our lives that count. Our lives died. We, we died. We are now alive in Christ Jesus. That is what's so amazing. That is a glorious, glorious life. Exciting life for all of us. <laughs> all right, John chapter 1. Now listen to this. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. He came to his own, but his own received him not. That's the Jewish people. All right. But to as many as did receive him, he gave the authority, the power, the privilege, the right. Okay, let me read it again. But to as many as did receive him and welcome him, he gave the authority, the power, the privilege. It's a privilege that we have. It, the privilege that we have is that we are called sons. He gave us the authority to become sons of God. That is a privilege. It's a privilege that we have. We have power. We have right to become the children of God. To become the children of God. That is to those who believe in His name. Who owe their birth neither to the bloods nor to the will of the flesh, but to God. Oh, Jesus. They are born of God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory. I love John chapter 1. But let me just say this. It says, Who owe their birth neither to the flesh nor to the will of, 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 of man, but to God. They are born of God. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. I read to you out of 1 John, uh, 1 Peter 1, that we have been regenerated, born again from an immortal, incorruptible seed. And that seed is the Word of God. Here it says that we are born of God. There's, there's a few other scriptures that says, you is born of God, do not live in sin. Meaning, it doesn't mean you don't make mistakes. It just said you're, not, you're no longer living in that old life of I am a sinner. I have been redeemed from that life and I am now living a life under the influence of his righteousness. All right. So I've been redeemed from my life as a sinner. Also, if you read Ephesians, it says that he, he, we who were dead in our trespasses and sins, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ Jesus. We were dead. He made us alive. We died he made us alive. We, we died and now Christ is living. We are alive in Christ Jesus. We are dead because of our sin. We died and we were raised from the dead. And now we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. All right. So do you understand when I said you must be heavenly minded to be of earthly good? All right. So I want to encourage Christians. Don't, the, I'm not saying be spooky. I remember the way we used to think about spirituality is like, if I'm spiritual, you know, I get this vague look in my eyes and I, you know, I'm so spiritual and I, I shake. And I, even though I shake sometimes under the power of God, it's not the shaking or the what you feel. To be spiritual is actually to, to just think the way that God thinks. To not, to not try and bring in the natural and, and balance it out. Uh, with the supernatural. Do not try and bring in the natural thinking. But to stick to the supernatural thinking. And to what God is saying and what he is thinking. Alright, so spirituality is to have the thoughts of God. You are spiritual when you think like God. <laughs> when you see things from his perspective. You are spiritual when you think his thoughts. You are spiritual basically when you declare the gospel as absolute truth. That... <laughs> That's a spiritual man that can say, Jesus is the answer, full stop, there's no other answer. <laughs> That's spiritual. That is spiritual. To not say, yo, Jesus is the answer, but, 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 but. <laughs> That's natural. To say, Jesus is the answer, full stop. That's spiritual. 
All right, and that's how it is to, to live uh, a life where you are spiritually minded. It says, look away from all that will distract unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. All right, so from Martinus' side, from my side, I used to be someone and that someone died. That someone is not being touched by me or anyone. That person is dead. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I bo I'm born again. I used to be that, but I'm not that any longer. I only have one father, and that is God. I am totally just a son of God on this earth. As much as Jesus basically came from heaven, Marnus came from heaven. <laughs> I, know, I know that's tough to hear, and even so do you. If you are born again, you, you literally came from heaven. <laughs> the day you got born again, you were born from above. That was the day you, you came from heaven. <laughs> that was the day your origin is only found in God and no longer in your natural birth. You, you, your natural birth only brought you unto this earth. That's the, that's the end of it. That's the, the only, only um, association that you should have with it. What you should have is your association should be with Christ Jesus and who you are in Christ. Man, this is going to bless you. Just keep on listening. It's going to bless you. It's going to get better even as we speak. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so um, in what, here's some ways that I've learned that why should we associate with Jesus? Why should we completely associate with Him and not tend to lean towards the natural? Um, here's one of, the, one of the things that I can do to... To, to throw it out there to say, listen, we all tend to sometimes think natural, all right? But that doesn't mean we are natural. <laughs> Let me say it like this. You died with Christ. Now thinking like that old person is just a memory of who you used to be. And so if we can now get you to disassociate yourself with that old you and completely find your new identity in Christ, then you're going to be totally free, <laughs> all right? Okay, so here's one of the ways we, I, can, I can make it clear to you how we normally associate with the natural. Remember, we are speaking about the natural birth and the supernatural birth. Born from above, born from our natural parents, born from, uh, in a natural world, living in a natural world, world, thinking like the natural world versus thinking like God thinks. Okay, so here's one of the ways. When you read the story of Peter and where Jesus came to him and called him to walk onto, onto, on the water, who do you associate with? Mostly, we teach it from the perspective that, that we are Peter, that need to look unto Jesus and walk on the water. But do you realize that as new creation believers, we should associate with Jesus? Our identity is not in Peter that walked a few steps and then sank. Even though that was amazing, I haven't even done it yet. So I'm, I'm one of those guys that, that never criticizes Peter for, for sinking. <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot even begin to judge him because I've never walked on water. I haven't. I've tried. I haven't done it yet. But I will. I will let you know when I do. Okay. <laughs> so well, I associate with, uh, we normally associate with Peter. But do you know, our true identity is in Christ. That means we do not associate and look at man in the natural. We don't associate with Peter in the natural. We associate completely with Christ. We are new creations in Christ. Full stop. We're not, we're not, we're not getting there, barely there, working up there. We've been, we died with Christ, we were raised with Christ, and we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Christianity is not about patching up the old man that you dig up from the grave. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people's Christianity is putting plasters on that old man. But that old man is dead. doesn't help you just put plasters and try and fix that old man. That old man died. <laughs> okay. So we associate so many times with Peter that came to Jesus. But what about associating with Christ? When, the, when we read the story about the woman that came and touched the, the hem of his garment, who do you associate with? 
Normally with the women, you think I just need to find Jesus and just touch his garment and I will be made whole. All right. But if I tell you that you are now in Christ and now basically in that story, you find your identity not in the woman that touched the garment, but in Christ, you are in him. Yes, you are not perfectly like him in word, thought and deed, but you'll never be if you keep on not associating yourself in, with him and realize that you are in him. If you never realize you are in him, you are now like him, he made you in his image, you are now one with Christ and Christ is in you, you are in Christ. If you keep on associating with the natural, you're going you're gonna to get stuck there forever. And so there's a life where you can be heavenly minded. And heavenly minded is to think of yourself as well as God thinks of you. To think of the world as God thinks of the world. To see things from his perspective. That is heavenly mindedness. All right. So I want to be heavenly minded that I can be of earthly good. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? I want, be, I want to be so heavenly minded that I'm actually of earthly good. All right. So there's never too much of heavenly mindedness. I'm not talking about weird and spooky. I'm talking about really being spiritually minded, thinking like God, seeing from God's perspective, and just basically hearing and believing the gospel. That's a true spiritual person that believes the gospel, that believes Jesus did it, that his sins are forgiven, that he's washed in the blood, that he's a new creation in Christ. That is a spiritual person. That is a sp or spiritual minded person. Thinking like God thinks. <laughs> okay, That's spiritual. Thinking like he thinks. All right, now let's go to Galatians. Because if you see, actually, the old agreement, it, God brought the law. The old agreement uh, um, was between God and the people of Israel. But the agreement rested upon the natural man. And, and so the agreement was, wasn't the end product. That was until the seed should come. All right. So, so the agreement of the law was, was between God and his people, but it rested upon the ability of the people. So it actually amplified the natural man or brought him to the front, but actually also showed up the natural man to the point that the natural man realized that he needs a savior and that he needs supernatural help. <laughs> okay. So, so the law will not make any person holy. It's like a mirror. You can wash your face against that mirror day by day. You'll still, you'll still, it's not going to clean you. It's not for the purpose of cleaning you up. The law is to show <laughs> the dirt. Okay. So the law showed the dirt in the, in humanity and caused humanity to know their need for a savior. Actually, it's more specifically the Jewish people. For their need for a savior. Okay, so, so that's what the law did. It showed, it showed the dirt in, 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 in terms of the natural. All right, so now listen to that. Listen to this. That means the law was really, it was given by God, but the agreement all can be called natural because it all depended on, depended on the natural man to keep the law. Okay, while grace is totally supernatural. All right, keep that in mind and let's go to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Thank you, Jesus. Are you blessed by this word? Man, I'm so blessed sharing this with you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. All right, Galatians chapter 4. Now remember, natural, supernatural, and the difference, and, 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 and here in Galatians, Paul was really just giving it to these uh, guys. He said, guys, you started in the spirit. Are you now reaching perfection by dependence on the flesh? You started in the supernatural life. Are you now going back to the natural again? Associating with the natural identity again? Are you trying to better the old man that actually died with Christ? Paul said it. He said, I do not receive God's grace in vain. He said, I died with Christ. I do not receive the grace of God in vain. He said, but you Galatians, who has bewitched you? Who has cast a spell over your eyes? That Christ was per portrayed crucified before you. And now you're trying to be perfect by dependence on the flesh. Now I want to say it goes both ways. 
It's the pen. It's 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 not judging yourself or associating yourself as a nat natural man, but also looking at your at your brothers and sisters in Christ with that perspective, with God's perspective, seeing them as holy saints, <laughs> and helping them to see more who they are and who they are in Christ, unveiling Christ to the church. Unveiling Christ and in doing so, maturing the body of Christ into the image of Jesus Christ. That is our role, to unveil Christ, that the church can see Him and grow into His, into His image by seeing that they are in Him, a new creation, and then start associating. Associating, I hope you get this word. It's more than associating, it's we are one. Therefore we associate, but we made us one with Him. It's our only life. <laughs> It's our only life as a Christian. You're going to try and dig up that old man forever. <laughs> that died with Christ. He'll never live again. He's dead. <laughs> All right. So find your new real identity in Christ. And you can't live with one foot in the world and one in the spirit. One in the natural, one in the supernatural. You're a total supernatural being. Sent from God into a natural world. To influence this natural world with his supernatural life. <laughs> Agents from heaven. Sent from the most high God. To bring life to this world that you live in. Man, I, I, I don't want to fit into this world. If I fit into this world, if I look like the world, start talking like the world, thinking like the rest of the world. If, if you start seeing me thinking like the rest of the world, there's, there's problems. <laughs> I've lost my view of who I am in Christ. And I'm starting to remember who I was. <laughs> I will not remember who I was. I will think of who I am. Because that's the only life I have, is who I am in Christ Jesus. I am what I am by the grace of God. In Christ I am what I am. Galatians chapter 4. Oh, natural, supernatural. Listen to this. Okay, so here it's, um, Paul is, is speaking about two covenants, two agreements. Now, he says, my little children, for whom I am suffering birth pains, until Christ is completely and permanently formed in you. I love this. Even though we are fully in Christ, new creation, Paul says, I want that truth to be visible. I want, I want Christ to be formed within you. I want Him to be seen within you, through you. Even though it's true that you are like Him, I want the world to see Him through you, and I want to see Him manifest through you. And so, so I pray, my little children, I'm suffering birth pains again until Christ be fully, permanently, completely form, formed within you. It said, would that you were with me now, that I could coax you vocally. I feel like that many times. If uh, especially during this lockdown, if I could be with the people personally and, 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 and help them and, and, and just coax them vocally. <laughs> he says, I'm fearful and perplexed about you. He says, tell me you are bent, you who are bent on being under the law. Will you listen to what the law really says? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the bondmaid, and one by the free woman. But whereas the child of the slave woman was born according to the flesh and had an ordinary birth, the son of the free woman was born in fulfillment with prom, uh, to, uh, of the promise. Now all this is an allegory. These two women represent two agreements. One covenant originated from Mount Sinai where the law was given and bears children for slavery. This is Hagar. Now listen to this. This is a beautiful picture. Now Hagar is, stands for Mount Sinai in Arabia. And she corresponds and belongs to the same category as the present Jerusalem. Now the present Jerusalem. Yeah, we'll speak about that later. For she is in bondage together with her children okay so the first agreement was uh, it says uh, the first agreement is this woman hey now it's from hagar or referred to hagar is a type of this agreement this type this this agreement this agreement so 
Hagar stands for slavery, and it was and, and the child that was born out of that woman was birthed out of the um, according to the flesh. All right, so was she um, that child was born according to the flesh? All right, so let me just read on. But the Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother. For it is written in the scripture, Rejoice, O barren woman, who has not given birth to children. Break forth into joyful shout. You are not feeling birth pangs. For the desolate woman has many more children than she who has a husband. But we, brethren, are children like Isaac, born in virtue of promise. Okay, the first one had an ordinary birth, a natural birth, and was born um, uh, according to the flesh. The sec- he, says this, he says, we are children like Isaac, born according to the promise. Yet as at that time the child born according to the flesh despised and persecuted him, born according to the promise... Uh, of the Holy Spirit, so it is also now. But what does the scripture say? Cast the slave woman and the child, never shall the son of the slave woman and the, be an heir and share in inheritance with the son of the free woman. That is speaking about trying to be under the law, trying to, be, to inherit what you can only inherit by grace and receive from Jesus. Verse 31. So brethren, we are born again, We are not children of the slave woman, the natural, but of the free, the supernatural. I want to read this out of the Amplified again. Galatians 4 verse 31. So brethren, we are born again. We are not children of the slave woman, the natural, but of the free woman, the supernatural. Do you see that all agreement is referred to a natural thing? Because it all depended on natural man. The new agreement is grace. And grace equals supernatural. (laughs) Grace equals according to the promise. And it's received by faith. Alright. So that is supernatural. It's all the work of God. By the law and the natural. It's all the work of man. By grace it's all the work of God. The gospel is not about what you can do for God. It's about what he came to do for you. It's by grace. It is therefore supernatural. Therefore, I want to say to you Christians today, you are supernatural. You are supernatural beings. You live in this natural world. And when you came to Christ, you died. But now the memory of the old you and the world that you live in sometimes causes you just to live like the world that you live in. And and even with myself, we find ourselves, we find ourselves thinking like the rest of the world. Um, just having the thoughts of the of the world, the the cares, the concerns of the world. Just think of that. God, the word of God says be anxious for nothing. And we all have been have been anxious for a few things, about a few things. <laughs> sometimes these concerns and cares that's why the word says, cast your burdens upon Jesus because he cares for you. You know, or you cast your burdens upon him and he cares for you. So, but the truth says, be anxious for nothing. The word says that he came to give us his peace, his joy. But yet we experience a little bit of joy and peace, a little bit of worry and fear. And we always have both. Do you know why we have both? We have not completely realized that we died to our natural birth. Therefore, as soon as people start, start going back to the natural origin, the natural birth, it's going to go like that and be like that in all areas of life. You're going to start, you're going to start going, thinking natural about other areas as well. And it's going to rob you from a heavenly inheritance and a life in Christ Jesus. So therefore, I have no dealings with that natural birth. Because the only thing that happened is that natural birth brought in the madness that died in Christ. Now that madness died in Christ and now is a new creation in Christ. And that is who I am in Christ Jesus. And so I'm, I'm completely dead. I'm not, I'm, okay, I said it also this morning that concerns are for people that have no God. 
<laughs> I want you to hear it. Fear of a people that does that. That, that's serving a dead God. That, that, people that are worshipping a dead God, a dead religion, should have fear. But those of us who have a real God in our lives, that, a living God, should have no fear. But yet we do have fear. And that fear comes because of the unrenewed mind. Because I just want to say this today, before I go to... Yo, let's go, let's go back to 1 Peter 3. Let's go back to, oh, yeah, 1 Peter 1, now 1 Peter chapter 3. All right. The, the reason I'm saying this is I want to I I completely separate Christianity from the natural way of life. I want you to understand that you're completely supernatural and you're placed in a natural world to have that supernatural influence. You're not from this world, but you are in this world. So your origin is from God and you are living from God, uh, from God, out of a relationship with God in this world. All right. So you cannot find your origin here anymore. You cannot associate there anymore. I cannot, I cannot even see my earthly father in a higher regard as my brothers and sisters in Christ. I cannot, I cannot acknowledge my earthly birth to the point where I acknowledge my earthly father above brothers and sisters in Christ. Even though I love my earthly father, <laughs> even though he, he, he's still my earthly father and I've, I honor him for who he is and love him for who he is, he's never going to be above my brothers and sisters in Christ. Never, never. In fact, I had to detach myself from that natural life. And constantly since the year that I got born again in 1999, Constantly detach myself from that thinking, from that way of life, and until I am where I am today. And I'm not perfect, but I know my life and my identity is not in, in my natural birth. My life and my ident identity is in Christ Jesus. I have found life in Jesus. And it wasn't by silver and gold that I've been purchased. I've been purchased by the precious blood of Jesus. The Lamb of God, a sacrificial Lamb that brought me out of that useless way of living that I inherited from my forefathers. A life of unbelief, <laughs> of tradition, of dead religion. God brought me into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I'm forever thankful for God and what He did for me. And so it is with my family, they also now have received heavenly life. <laughs> they used to be dead in their trespasses and sins, but they have received that life in Christ Jesus. Come on, and we are all brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. So, man, I, I'm excited with, to share this word. Is there something that I wanted to say when I just jumped off the topic there? I was heading to 1 Peter. Let's go there. Maybe I'll find what I wanted to say as, as we go in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. 1 Peter 3. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> now, the, the biggest problem of not seeing yourself completely new in Christ is that memory that you now carry of the old you. And, you, and you're trying to make it like and the world and associating with that natural birth will cause you to fix that identity again. That you actually need to die out of. You need, you need it out of your life. You need complete new life in Christ. So, if you start thinking naturally, it, it brings you back to the natural life. Then, what happens is, you start seeing yourself that way. And you start, your identity is now again formed by what's happening around you and what, or, or, or the life that you used to live. And now you're starting to think, I am that person. All right? So, when it comes to you acting like the old you, I just want to call it what it is. Any form of sin. I, I call sin unbelief. Uh, it's, it's rooted in unbelief. Anything done in unbelief is sin. Anything done that is not completely the nature of God in your life is, is, is a result of sin. Now, if you then therefore sin or you act out of... Uh, yeah, if you sin, you are acting out of that memory. But you are not what you just did. Right? Okay, I'll say this with you. Or for you again. You are not what you think. 
You are not what you say. You are not what you do. I know motivational speakers will tell you, you are not what you say. You are what you do. Or you're not what you... You are... <laughs> Motivation will say you are what you think, you are what you say, and you are what you do. And you must work on what you think, work on what you say, and work on what you do until you are. <laughs> okay. I say you are, the gospel says, you are not what you think, you are not what you say, you are not what you do. You are what God says you are. And that will influence what you say, think, and do. Isn't that awesome? You are what God says you are, and that will influence what you think, Say and do. And you must keep on remaining on, or you must remain under that influence of who God is and who you are in Christ so that it will influence what you think, say and do. And therefore you will change on the outside as you are changed on, on the inside. As your identity is formed in your heart, your actions and deeds will start to reflect your true heavenly identity. Also, okay, so you make a mistake, you are not what you just did. You sin, you are not what you did. You are what God says you are. And the reason you are sinning is because of that fresh memories of what you used to be. And so the worst thing you now can do is to fix your identity there. Don't associate yourself with, the, with those deeds. See it for what it is. It's an act of the flesh. It comes out of that old nature that died with Christ. Now it is simply here because of the memory of it. 